new overflow one. Let's try moving to 64 bit, but don't worry, we'll start early or start easy. Overflow the buffer and change the return address to the flag function that's program. You can find it here on the shell server. All right, so I'll copy paste that. All right, so we have again uh, set group ID executable vuln, which we'll be able to read flag. Let's look at vuln.c. Uh, this looks pretty similar before. We just have this vuln method that does a get us into a buffer, so I'll be able to overflow that. And they've provided a flag method for us. Looks like the buffer is 64 bytes long. Okay, so first thing I'm going to need to do is figure out where the return address is on the stack. So I'm going to print 64 A's plus the rest of the alphabet. And I'll put that into a file in my home directory. And I'll run vuln in gdb. I'll send in that input file. We got the seg fault. RSP is the stack pointer on the 64-bit machine. So we have 696A6B6C. So I'll go to ASCII table.com. 69 uh, is letter I. So IJKL. So IJKL is where the um, where the return address is. I'll do an obj dump and look for that flag method. And 670740. So if I replace the IJKL with 670740. I think all the zeros will be there already for the return address. I'll just do that. And that should get it to call flag. So let's try that. Oh, segmentation fault. That's a little bit surprising. Okay. Um, hmm. All right, so I'm going to need to debug this. Um, all right, so let's just try running in the debugger again. And oh, flag.txt missing in the current directory. Of course, yes, I won't be able to read the flag file because I'm in the debugger. I won't have the set group ID. But what I can do is I can switch to my home folder and I can run the program there. I have a flag.txt lying around in my home folder, so this should be okay. All right, now we're getting a segmentation fault in printf. Okay, so we are, we are making it into flag and then we're making it into printf and we're crashing in printf. So I'm going to print out the instruction that's executing at the instruction pointer. It's a move APS instruction. So let's take a look at that. Move APS Intel assembly. All right, so this is a moved align pack single precision. All right, the operand must be aligned on a 16 byte boundary. All right, so let's see using RSP. RSP ends in an eight, so that's on an eight byte boundary, but not a 16 byte boundary. So that's the issue. When we change the return address, we didn't end up aligned on a 16 byte boundary. So if I just move the stack by eight bytes, which I can do by calling some other method before I call flag, then that should work. All right, so let's see. All right, so I'll see if there are any interesting looking methods in here that I could possibly go to that just don't do anything that will allow me to move my 
stack by eight bytes. Um, didn't really see anything there. Oh, I have an idea. I could, I could just go to a return instruction, right? So I could just go to this 4006E9. So if I go to 4006E9, And then I'll need five null bytes to get that. Then I still need the address of flag, which I've sadly forgotten. So So there's the address of flag. So let's throw that in there. So six seven zero seven forty, and then I'll need the five null bytes again. One, two, three, four, five. And I'll CD back to the folder and we'll say, let's just see if this works. And put TXT. That wasn't too different, right? Well, it was more different than I thought because that move APS was a little surprising. But I, what I did there was I just jumped to a return, which took me right back and then went and did the next thing. Um, so that got me back on the 16 byte boundary so the move APS would work. And now I have my flag. So we'll go ahead and copy that and put it over here and grab some points. <laughs> 